anyone who's that uptight, nah, you gotta wear costumes. Some floofy sleeve nonsense like this. So confining. Put on all this makeup and someone is weed whacking. Please stop. Dropping $350 on a leather corset was very unusual for me. <laughs> Imagine you're a little kid and Halloween's coming up, but you're not allowed to pick your own costume. Your parents pick a costume for you and they pick something that you don't feel any connection to. On the day of Halloween, you get dressed up in it and you're supposed to feel some kind of joy that all the other kids have, but you don't feel that. You just feel uncomfortable and disappointed. And then imagine that feeling every single day of your life, every time you put on anything. That's the best way that I can describe what gender dysphoria feels like. I don't mean to offend anyone by saying that gender is a costume for everyone. I think gender is something that there's just no one size fits all label for it. But this is my story and my truth. And for me, femaleness was a costume that didn't fit and didn't spark joy. And so I finally took it off. Costumes helped me do that. And in particular, an obsession with Renfest costumes was what helped me do that. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the story how Renfest made me realize that I was trans. First, a little backstory. I was always unusual for my gender. When I was five years old was the first time I begged my mom to let me chop off all my hair. In second grade, I always wore boys clothes, black jeans that had to be pried off my body to be washed. At that age, when people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I often told them a man. Everyone thought this was cute. It was the 90s and people just said I was a tomboy. There were times in my life where I would try to fulfill my role as female. I would grow my hair out and and try to be more feminine and make people happy. But eventually I just couldn't stand it anymore. When I was in eighth grade, that was the year I tried my hardest to fit in with girls. I had transferred to a new school and I thought, here's an opportunity to be normal for once. I had grown my hair out. I wore sparkly blue eyeshadow and everyone in the school called me a dyke. Somehow they knew that I wasn't right as a girl even though I was trying my very hardest to fit in. The bullying that year that I experienced was really, really intense. I think that it shoved me way, way back into the closet. And that's why it took until I was in my 30s to come out as non-binary and pan. Because I could be attracted to men, and that was more socially acceptable. You know, I just accepted that that meant that there wasn't anything queer about me. Some of that was probably internalized homophobia. Some of it was just like, I always had this thing where I didn't want anyone else to like tell me who I was. So because I could be attracted to men, I went hard in that direction and I would date the most macho men I could find, which was often very <laughs> bad for me. Over the course of our relationships, it would always play out the sort of narrative that you see a uh, mask female character who, is conquered by some macho guy and falling in love with him and he makes her more feminine. 10 Things I Hate About You, it happens to Starbuck in Battlestar Galactica. Those scenes are always super depressing to me when butch female character finally like puts on a dress and whoa, she's so hot now type of thing. I would end up living that out in the relationship because as I presented more femininely, the guy I was seeing would pay more attention to me or be kinder to me. And so a lot of my relationships followed this pattern of like me starting to date someone, gradually becoming more feminine and simultaneously more depressed. Eventually it would end in tragedy. In college, I smoked a lot of weed. And I would often get high and stare in the mirror and feel this incredible disappointment that my face was female because in my head it wasn't and I would just have this out of body feeling. My roommate got so used to it, she'd like see me staring in the mirror and be like, did you forget you were female again? <laughs> this was in the early 2000s and I really didn't have an awareness of trans people at the time. So I didn't have a name to put to what I was going through. I had never heard of gender dysphoria. If I had earrings or makeup on to go to a party, I would sometimes have to like rip them off in the bathroom and take it off. It was like a compulsive feeling like I, I have to get this off of me because all of a sudden it felt so wrong. I forced myself to perform femininity for so many years. And why? Because no one ever bought it. Like it never worked. The first costume I'm going to put on today is the costume that I wore every day to work for my entire 20s as a teacher. I'm dreading putting it on right now, but I think it's important context for why I became obsessed with Renfest and Renfest costumes 
and how they helped me sort of break away from this Miss Kern persona that took over my life while I was teaching in schools. At this point, I don't think it's possible for me to be a public school teacher in Texas anymore because I've come out on the internet as trans. Maybe that'll change someday and I can be myself and a teacher, but I don't think it's the case now. I don't like it. Is it just me or can you also see how wrong this is? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So I worked for 10 years in a charter school district. There were a lot of aspects of that culture that were toxic for me. And that's a whole nother video. It was a school, but it was also sort of a cult. 100% every day, whatever it takes. You can never do enough for the school district. You can never work enough hours. We have a longer extended school day than most uh, public schools. And so we were expected to lesson plan and grade all night long and all weekend long. And I pretty much did that for 10 years. This didn't leave a lot of time to figure out who I was. My life was this job. The majority of people working in the district were white women, white Christian women women as a Jewish person. I was also an outsider. A lot of these women were the brunch loving, Pinterest pinning, Maxinistas. I certainly know a number of like amazing, wonderful women that I met at that district, but overwhelmingly the white woman culture. I know uh, women of color felt oppressed by it. And as a Jewish closeted trans person, I too felt really oppressed by it. This outfit always felt like a costume. Look at, look at this. Earrings every day, full face of makeup. I would, you know, mask it up with a blazer. I would always have like a feminine floaty top underneath. There always had to be a balance of masculine and feminine elements so that people wouldn't figure out just how mannish I really am. In spite of trying hard enough to fit that bill, I didn't succeed. In every professional evaluation I had, my gender came up. You know, your work is excellent. Your kids scores are excellent. Everything's great. But people find you too direct. You need to get to know the other teachers more and gossip with them. Literally a piece of feedback I got in an end of year evaluation was that I needed to put more smiley faces in my emails. You're not allowed to ask the way a man would. I need this plan by the end of the week. You have to ask, hey, if it's not too much trouble, I'm so sorry, but do you think you could please? These are the types of things that I was coached on throughout my career. And so <laughs> me becoming more professional was really just, I got better at performing this like professional femininity. It wasn't just the clothes and the makeup and the jewelry. It was, hi, how's it going? Oh my God. How are your kids? Yes. And the voice, the manners, the gestures, everything. I had to learn to perform that and put on this ill-fitting Halloween costume every single day. So I was never able to write or be creative at all the whole time I was working there. I didn't write a thing, even though I had majored in creative writing in college and all I'd ever wanted to do with my life was write books. I was living this like inauthentic, Becky approved version of myself. And I started to feel really dead inside, so burnt out, always right on the edge of just giving up, feeling totally dissatisfied. I was never satisfied no matter where I was or what I was doing. I think I was terrified of living more authentically though, because once I started to figure out some truths about myself, it turned out they were pretty incompatible with working in that school district. Then in my mid twenties, I discovered a creative outlet. I could be transported to a magical place, be more myself. And I started to live for it. And that place was Renfest. Sad to say, it was where I felt most alive. Counted down the months between Renfests here in Texas. So thank God, it is time to take this clown mask off and get to the good costumes. Obviously, when I started costuming, I didn't know what I was doing. This is better than Ms. Kern, but not right for me either. So the first time my friend Sarah took me to Renfest, she had to drag me to get me to go. I had never been to a Renfest before. I didn't know what to expect. We went to the Texas Renaissance Festival, which is the largest Renaissance Festival in the world. And I think it's where Renaissance Festival started. It's an entire freaking city, all right, with like different neighborhoods of fantasy. You walk like 20 miles when you're there in a day. And as soon as we walked in the gates for the first time and I saw all these people in these gorgeous costumes living their bliss, music playing on lutes and bagpipes, I was just immediately in love, like madly in love. As a kid, I was always obsessed with genre. I loved fantasy and sci-fi, but particularly fantasy had my heart. I loved the Talking to Dragons series by Patricia C. Reed, the Alana First Night series when I found them a little later on. I always wanted to be the princess that cropped off her hair and ran off to be a knight. Going to Renfest was like reading one of those great fantasy series for the first time. I felt totally transported. Only it wasn't a book, it was a real place you could go 
and eat a turkey leg and drink a little mead and then hang out with a centaur. And how cool was that? First time I went, I'm gonna put up a picture, look at this shit. I was wearing a sundress because this was at one of my most feminine moments in my life. Like a love drunk fool. I stumbled into like literally the first costume shop in the fairground and bought a $350 leather corset without even thinking if like, do I want a leather corset? I had just never seen a leather corset on sale before. And I was like, oh my God, I must have that. Something you gotta understand about that purchase though is like, I'm an extremely frugal person. At the time when I was working in the school district, I didn't spend money on anything other than groceries and like occasionally a new blazer for work. In a tiny cheap apartment on my teacher's salary, dropping $350 on a leather corset was very unusual for me. It's so funny to me now when you go to the rent fest and you can so obviously spot the garb curious people who just like clearly walked into the Ren Fest, saw something amazing that they had to have, and then like layered it on top of their normie clothes. I had a lot of fun that first day and it was like painful to leave at night. I knew the next time I went to Ren Fest, I wanted to be able to camp out so we could see what the whole bonfire situation was. We were already making plans to go back as soon as we could. So what is Ren Fest? Cynically speaking, it's a mall. The only thing there is to do there ostensibly is to consume, but there's also a possibility that you'll have an adventure there. It's a place you can meet weirdos. You can create your own fun. You can LARP. Thousands of people can gather together to put aside some of those societal expectations and roles that confine us in mundanity. Also speaking cynically, like it could be considered a monument to like glorifying some white supremacist notion of the past that never really existed, a patriarchal fantasy, busty winches and when men were real men. And certainly there are people who are attracted to the Renfest for those reasons. But there's also the possibility of Renfest being a fantasy alternate history, a better history. My friend group was all queer people and people of color. Renfest is a place where we can literally see ourselves represented in a genre where we've traditionally been left out because it was so white and cis and straight and abled, etc. And so in Texas, the Renfests are a weird mix of these like kind of more redneck scene. And also you'll see like a lot of very urban queers showing up and like doing their thing at Renfest. So as soon as I got home from Renfest that first weekend that we went, I got on my computer and started obsessively looking for Renfest clothes. And for several years, the majority of my like leisure expenditures was entirely Renfest garb. Now I realized that that was a chance to be someone else outside of my normal life, which I was finding like so stifling in terms of my gender and creativity. I was looking for myself in those costumes. I would look at the women's section of these costuming websites because I considered myself to be a woman at the time. I ordered skirts and bodices and things like this. I would be so excited waiting for the packages to come and then getting them and opening them up and I would put on these clothes and look in the mirror and feel deflated because they had looked so good on the models on the website and yet they weren't right for me. They were, I couldn't find what was right for me. Long circle skirts didn't make me any more comfortable when they were like Ren Festy skirts than wearing skirts and dresses in my real life, which had always made me feel uncomfortable. I thought maybe the problem is like, I'm not a bodice and skirt wench type person. Maybe I need a long flowing dress. It would be more comfortable for me. And I've always been like really about comfort with clothes. And I was like obsessed with this one dress from Arm Street. And so I bought it. I mean, on me. What the hell was I thinking? <laughs> this is not my style. This is not what I need to be wearing. So why the hell did I buy this? And it's custom made, no refunds, no returns. I thought that by putting on these clothes, maybe I would figure out like the way I was supposed to be a woman. And I was kind of just like grasping at straws, I guess, during those early years of renting. So this was a huge mistake. If I ever meet an oak tree like myself, who has a much more femme style, and my measurements, then I will happily pass it along. But one morning I had an epiphany because we were at Sherwood Forest, which is the Ren Fest that's just outside Austin. The second day we'd camped overnight and I didn't want to like put on the whole costume and like big heavy skirts again. So I just wore my like bodice top with some jeans. So comfortable. <laughs> I felt so good all day. I felt so free, more like myself than I ever had at Ren Fest or anywhere. And I always felt good in these costumes at Renfest, even when they were more feminine. But then I would look at the pictures later for the more feminine looks and be like, 
oh, that doesn't look like, mm, that makes me sad for some reason. When I looked at the pictures of me wearing pants, I didn't have those feelings that I now recognize as like dysphoria. It's interesting like what worked and what didn't. Like in this photo, I loved the way I looked, even though my hair was still really long. It was kind of like Kevin Sorbo hair. It's kind of a more mass look. I don't know, I still think this look is really cute and I would wear it if that bodice still fit me. It does not since I started weightlifting. Let's got swole. I felt like I was on the right track. Like I was starting to figure out who I was supposed to be at Renfest, but I felt like it still wasn't hard enough. And also I was like addicted to buying costumes at this point. And so I decided to get into armor and weaponry. It's a bit much. At this time in my life, I think it's pretty obvious that I was playing a lot of Skyrim. I used to be an adventurer like you, until I took an arrow to the knee. This shit was expensive. But again, this was like my only joy in life. I think I had to buy a set of leather armor, I think in order to feel fulfilled. I think there's probably two kinds of people on this earth. People who understand that I had to buy a set of leather armor and people who don't. The vast majority of armor available online is for men. I had learned already from buying Renfest menswear that it tended to be very large. So I knew if I bought men's armor, it wouldn't fit me. It wouldn't fit like my hips or my shoulders. At the time I wasn't lifting, I'm actually quite a bit, my back is much broader now and maybe I could find something that would make it work. There were a few women's armor options and so obviously I ended up going with that knowing it was the only way it would fit me. I was really disappointed that this one had like boob cups, uh, but at least it was functional. It kind of covered the major vital organs. A lot of the women's armor that is available online is just like a leather bra. I wasn't really interested in that. I didn't want to look sexy. I wanted to look badass. So this number, like it did have these boob contours, but it wasn't too obvious. Although now I really don't like that about that this top. I really just wish it was androgynous and straight. Something y'all need to know about me is I loved Xena as a kid my favorite TV show, hands down. What was not to love, she was mannish, but sexy and badass. She was a pan icon, melting hearts all over ancient Greece and Rome and sometimes China and Judaica. Like, yeah, they put her in boobs in a skirt, but y'all know she like didn't really wanna be wearing that. Hella BDE. I feel like Xena just went around making everybody in that show gay. So one time I was actually wearing this armor to Renfest when I ran into like a, an amazing Xena impersonator. There I was in my like sad, sort of Xena knockoff armor and she was the real deal. In that moment when I met her, I was like so thrilled. But when I looked at that picture later, I got so disappointed because the skirt was just like not right. I felt like I still looked too feminine in it. It was too much like a dress, even though it was armor. And so I decided I I guess I'm not really Xena. I also learned that first time I wore this run vest is that this is super uncomfortable, like almost as bad as wearing high heels. If it's cold and you're wearing this, it's not warm. If it's hot and you're wearing this, you're miserable. It chafes, it like rubs on your neck. It's so confining. You don't feel like free to move. And uh, all in all, it's just, look at this. It's like hard to even keep all your straps and bits in the right places. I definitely still love my armor. Like there's a place in my heart for it, but I'm probably not gonna wear it because it's super uncomfortable. <laughs> At this time, I also got super into weapons. This bow and quiver and these lovely arrows were a gift from my husband on my birthday one year. He knows me so well and I absolutely love them. We still have a lot of fun shooting this in the backyard. My uh, nephew and nibbling recently got into uh, shooting the bow and arrow back there. This one's fake, not sharp. Just looks cute for like a piratey costume. I bought myself a sword, thought long and hard about what I wanted. I ended up getting this uh, Scottish dirk, which is now super rusty. Probably like sword aficionados will will feel like I'm abusing it terribly. It is a real weapon and it is sharp. 
you know, it's for killing. And that's actually something that I am not into anymore. So I used to love like weaponing up at the Ren Fest. I was like, oh, sword. But when my daughter was born, I don't know, something inside of me changed. Part of it was just having a baby and like it made me more aware of the humanity of other people and that other people were babies once and like a, des a biological desire to like protect all human beings. I think another part of it was the medical trauma I went through. After my daughter was born, I had a really rough and I had to have a couple follow-up surgeries. I came out of surgery and they had mixed up my chart. Major, very invasive surgery on basically just ibuprofen because they mixed up my charts and I wasn't given painkillers for hours. I experienced what I have come to call ego death pain where you like forget who you are and there's nothing to you except for pain. And I had chronic pain for over a year after that experience. And that changed me fundamentally to where I cannot stomach any kind of violence in books, movies, TV shows. I can handle it better in books, but it sucks because a lot of, well, I'm not gonna say it sucks, but a lot of the gratuitously violent media that I consumed a lot as a kid, especially in the fantasy genre, I no longer could get any enjoyment out of. Like, I just, I don't want to watch or hear about people suffering anymore. It's going to be a really unpopular opinion in like the YA Twitter world because YA is super violent <laughs> ever since the Hunger Games. I didn't want to glorify violence in any way and I sort of felt like walking around the Ren Fest with a bunch of weapons. If I were to bring my daughter with me like that she would see me like glorifying weaponry and I didn't I didn't want to send her that message or any kids that message so I don't carry weapons at the Ren Fest anymore. No shade to anyone who does. I get it. It used to be super fun for me to walk around with this sword on my head but you know i'm just not a warrior anymore like i had a baby i got tore up from it shit changed and so i've ditched the weapons i would usually have another bracer here but my nephew stole it he also stole my favorite renfest shirt which i'm supposed to be wearing in the next section but he stole it so i'm gonna have to wear another kind of knockoff one if you have nephews they're gonna steal your renfest shit huzzah the last few times I've been to Renfest, I've worn something pretty simple like this. Just like white shirt tucked into black leggings or pants. You got the, the big belt with some accessories hanging from it. And I usually wear this bracer. This is the only piece of armor I still wear. This was a gift to me from my friend Sarah. And Sarah's the one who's really been the ringleader of our little group of, of friends who always go to Renfest together. This is one of the best presents I've ever gotten and she gave it to me for my birthday. It's a bracer with a pen and a tiny bottle of ink. And I love the symbolism of that. I don't defend myself and fight with weapons. I do it with words on the page, which is... When I wear this to Renfest, I feel great. I feel really comfortable. And me starting to wear this really coincided with me coming out as non-binary. There's a picture of me and my friend Aster. I had just found out I was pregnant with my baby. Aster came out to me as non-binary. That day, we spent a long time talking about their gender. It was the first time I had had a close friend who was non-binary and everything they were saying applied to me in the way I'd been feeling my whole life. I told them if this was something that had been around when I was younger because they were a few years younger than me, I definitely would have done it. But being married and pregnant, it felt like it was too late for me to come out as non-binary. It's never too late to come out as your truth, but I, I was putting that on myself that I was like too old to come out. Being pregnant made my gender dysphoria so much more intense. I also had body dysmorphia on top of the dysphoria. So it was a little bit hard to parse what was what. My breasts getting really big made me feel very strange about them. Breastfeeding my daughter was also both like a beautiful and terrible experience. I have very ambivalent feelings to say the least about my chest. When I went with Aster that time, you know, it was the first time I'd ever had to go to Renfest sober and definitely a little bit of the magic and sparkle had worn off. It feels a little bit like when you've read a fantasy series too many times and you reread it trying to get back that magic, but all you can get is the nostalgia for the way it made you feel. I kind of stopped for a number of reasons. One was like the physicalness of being pregnant and 
then later breastfeeding and having to pump and figure out going to the Ren Fest, like that was all kind of overwhelming. Another thing was money. After my daughter was born, like I said, I got kind of messed up by it and had a number of surgeries and I was temporarily disabled. In the school district that I had dressed up for and given everything to for 10 years was so shitty to me about it. I needed uh, an extra month of work from home time and the human resources uh, department and my new supervisor at the time were horrible to me. Basically, I was forced out. I was encouraged by my manager to quit and just like come back later and was promised that my job would be there for me when I came back and it wasn't. All because I needed like a month of work from home. And now because of the pandemic, irony of ironies, every fucking person in that district is working from home. So, you know, fuck yourselves. I'm bitter, yeah, I'm bitter. 10 years of my life and they couldn't give me one month to heal after I'd been like torn up. Uh, but anyways, in a way, you know, for myself, it was good because that medical trauma gave me the freedom to finally figure out who I was. Like the district that I had given everything to had screwed me over and I didn't have to live a lie anymore. And thank God my husband was super supportive when I was like, you know what, I think I want to try to write a book and not go back, you know, not find another job right away. He was totally supportive and was like, yeah, go for it. This is going to drive me nuts. So I decided to, you know, really make a go of it and try to be a writer. I had put him through school the previous five years and he had just started working at NASA. So I didn't have to wear this professional woman Miss Kern costume anymore. I could figure out who I really was. Immediately I knew the novel I'd been kicking around in my head for a few years. That's what I wanted to write. I realized I didn't want to wear makeup anymore or wear underwire bras or perform femininity in any way. And while I had been pregnant, I had been so feminized, you know, everything is so like womanhood, sisterhood, girlhood, your womb, your, your life giving force. Even just the terms woman and female had started to chafe or I had realized that they chafed and had always chafed. As I got more comfortable calling my friend Aster they them pronouns, I noticed that people using she pronouns for me just Oh, it just rubbed me the wrong way. And with a very small group of queer friends, I started to try out going by they, them, and it instantly made me feel euphoric. Like every time someone introduced me as them or used that word for me, it gave me a feeling of like, yes, I am understood. <laughs> like, this is who I am. Now I'm a poor writer. I don't have the money to spend on expensive Renfest costumes anymore. Even to just afford a day at the festival, the tickets and the cost of food and drinks would be pretty prohibitive. Having made this video, I'm like longing for a time when this pandemic is over, Renfest can occur and I can go back with my friends and you know, just have a lovely day at the fair. Another reason I think that like going to RenFest became less of an obsession with me over those years because I was more comfortable with myself. And I think that was kind of true for all of our friend, my friends in that group. Like what we had been looking for every time we had gone to RenFest, like we had found ways to incorporate more of that authenticity into our own lives. And I started coming out to people slowly. I came out to, you know, my closest queer friends first and then my husband and he was super he's been super supportive and cool about everything like it's taken a few conversations but he's always loved me and i've always been this same person since i was five years old he just had to wrap his head around that and then he was fine like he's been great and he uses my pronouns really consistently now and refers to me as spouse rather than wife when we first started dating that narrative I talked about, I started playing it out with him out of habit. Like I started feminizing myself. I grew my hair out for our wedding thinking like that that would be, he would expect that of me. But as the years went by, I realized like he did not give a shit. He likes me better with short hair. He likes me better when I'm more confident and feeling good about myself. And that always coincides with me like presenting in a way that I want to, which is a more mask way or a more androgynous way. Really androgyny is what makes me comfortable. And I should have known that he would be supportive because he was such a good sport. Like very early on in our dating, I was like, you're gonna have to dress up with me and go to RenFest with me or this is not gonna work. And that probably really would have been a deal breaker. And he was like, yeah, I'm in, I'm down. So I always knew he was a good sport. Because we are all, after all, always wearing a costume. You might think of it as like your normal clothes, but it's a look that you have picked. 
And if there's anything that I hope for the people of the world is that they will find a costume that gives them bliss and euphoria and that they won't be afraid to present themselves in the way that just makes them feel excellent. A lot of people out there are terrified of wearing costumes. They won't do it for Halloween or a Ren Fest or a convention or a dress up party. Part of me thinks that maybe they're afraid of putting on a costume because what if they put it on and it feels better than what they wear in their everyday life? What if they're a cis man and they put on a dress for a costume to be funny and it feels really good? Maybe they're afraid to put on costumes because they're afraid if they take off the day-to-day -day costume of their identity, they won't know who they are inside. They won't know who's left. And I think a lot of this fear comes from homophobia and transphobia. Just the idea of dressing up, you know, dating back to the early days of theater in Shakespeare's time, men would cross dress as women. So dressing up in costume became queer coded, even though I'm not an anthropologist, but wearing costumes and wearing masks is probably common to every single human culture on the face of the earth. It makes me really sad when you see a lot of couples at RenFest where you'll see a woman in a gorgeous, like so elaborate costume and then her husband's in like a South Park t-shirt and camo cargo shorts. Like make an effort, dude. Put on a shirt like this, it's not hard. You'll look awesome to her. Do it for her. In like a non-binary look group that I'm in uh, on Facebook, I wrote like, why is it that I feel more euphoria in a costume than I do in any of my normal clothes? Does anyone else feel me? And a lot of the people in that group said, yes, absolutely, they did. And someone made a really interesting point that being trans, being kind of an outsider, you're someone who's never felt like you fit in with mainstream society. I've never felt a super strong connection to modern American culture. It's not anything like what I would have designed for the world if I was in charge. Clothes that are a little more whimsical, a little more fantastical, clothing from a revisionist, queer magical history book that was not horrifying for people like me. That is really appealing to me. So obviously like the title of this video was clickbait. Renfest didn't make me trans. In fact, it wasn't the thing that made me realize I was trans. But all those years that I was going to Renfest and working it out and trying femme costume after femme costume, gradually becoming more androgynous, going through the like super sort of mask phase of my armor and weapon wearing, maybe toxic masculinity coming in, and then ending up in very comfortable in my androgynous non-binary skin. I think that evolution of the costumes that I wore to Renfest really uh, mirrors the evolution of my understanding of my gender and being comfortable with myself. I think you can tell from the pictures, I hang out with some pretty damn empowered and amazing femmes and they make womanhood look so good and so cool. And I tried to be their sister for so long, but at the end of the day, that's just not me. In conclusion, wear a costume, follow your bliss, go to a con, go to a Ren Fest, put on some weird shit until you feel euphoric. <laughs>